Hi, and today we will learn how to draw circles in perspective. A lot of man-made objects consist of circles and cylinders. You could think of clocks, wheels, hats, etc. Even organic volumes such as arms or legs could be visualized as a simple cylinders. But more important, that when you rotate something, imagine opening a door, it makes a circle. When we draw a circle in perspective, it becomes an ellipse. Let's start with circle, fill it. In perspective, if we rotate this, it becomes an ellipse. Ellipse has a degree from 90 to 0. Let's use a protractor. Mark 0 degree, 90 degree, 45 degree, and let's say 23. 90, 45, 23, 0. We could extend these lines to the right. And now let's see. 90 degree ellipse is a perfect circle. 0 degree ellipse represented by a line. And you could find everything in between 23, 45, 60 degree, 30 degree. Let's leave it at 45 degree. To draw ellipses properly, we need to understand anatomy of ellipse. It has a minor and major axis. Minor axis. Major axis. which always at the right angle to each other. And it's divided by each axis into equal symmetrical halves. For drawing, most important is minor axis. It divides an ellipse across narrower dimension and always points to the vanishing point. You could think of it as an axis of the wheel which is always perpendicular to the wheel itself. What is very important and useful about circles and ellipses is how they fit into a square. I will draw the same scenario in top view and in perspective so that we could compare some points. Well, let's start with the square. Let's draw diagonals, which would give us center of the square. From that we could draw a circle. Let's fill it. Now, I want you to notice that circle touches our square in, in points in exact halfway. Now if we draw same thing in perspective, horizon line, let's start with our ellipse. We could draw minor axis of ellipse, major axis of ellipse, center of vision, and let's draw lines that are tangent to our ellipse, to our circle in perspective. Okay, and this tangent lines would give us perfect square in perspective. I know it's very distorted, but I did it intentionally so that you could see construction better. Vanishing point here, vanishing point here, our diagonals. And now let's check, check it. Um, circle touches square in the exact halfway. 
Let's see if it happens in perspective. Boom, exactly. This point and this point exactly at the halfway of the square in perspective. Now this point, both the center of circle and center of square represented here center of square in perspective and circle in perspective. Why I did all this construction is because it's very important to see the difference between the center of elliptical shape of 2D elliptical shape, this one, and center of real thing, circle, that is going in space, this. Now, why this is happening? Why we see that these points are wider than these points? Because if we draw line of sight from here, and let's say this is our station point, lines that are tangent, this is our light rays, we would see that these points are actually these points. It's just because of perspective and foreshortening we see this wider than this. Now you could compare it with what happens in reality and what we see as an illusion. Okay, one more time. This is, this is center of 2D shape in the ellipse and this is center of 3D circle going in space. Now having this knowledge, we could use an ellipse to construct a square or a grid without station point. Let's say you want to draw a sketch of the car or a bicycle and you don't want to mess up with all perspective constructions, vanishing points, etc. and want to use small space of the sketchbook. It's possible to use just a few, literally few lines to establish a perspective and use ellipse to find a perfect square to maintain proportions. Let's start with our simple construction. Vertical line, two lines go into the imaginary vanishing point to the right, two lines go into the imaginary vanishing point to the left. And now we want to draw an ellipse to find our square. First, a line that is perpendicular to the surface on which we want to draw a circle. This would be the minor axis. If it's perpendicular, it should go to the same vanishing point as these lines. The second, the circle touches the vertical line at the halfway here. Circle touches top and bottom points at uh, top and bottom lines at points that are vertically aligned. And we should be able to draw three lines going to the same vanishing point through through that ellipse. Okay, it's very difficult to draw freehand ellipse on a tablet, at least for me. You could use an ellipse in Photoshop or uh, use a traditional template or just practice a lot. Like this elliptical movements with your hand. I want to draw it accurately for now because it's, you know, educational video. Okay, we need an ellipse, transform selection, and now we should tweak it to meet our three conditions. This should go to the vanishing point, our minor axis. It should touch in the halfway and also it should touch top and bottom lines. Okay. okay. Let's see where it touches. I think it's pretty pretty near to be good. Okay, let's fill it. And let's see if it meet our three conditions. First, 
it touches at halfway, it touches here and it touches here. These two points are vertically aligned, more or less, and through this point goes line to the vanishing point. And the last one, or, or maybe the first one, is we should be able to draw minor axis to the vanishing point, like this. And it should divide our ellipse into two symmetrical halves. halves. I think it's pretty close. Now, it says us that this is our perfect square in perspective. And now we could use this square to multiply and multiply the square and make a grid like this using our crosshairs. This method works best in combination with Brewer method, which we will discuss in the next in the next lesson. Well, let's talk about dividing circles in perspective. For starting, let's draw one. Our horizon line an ellipse representing circle in perspective. Our center of vision, which goes through uh, the minor axis in this particular case. We're going to draw square around an ellipse, around the circle. Now, do you remember our simple concept that you could solve any perspective problem if you uh, solve it out of perspective? Now let's draw the same thing out of perspective. This is square. Let's find center of the square and draw circle that fits perfectly into our square. Okay. And let's say we want to find one sector of this circle in perspective. Let's say this this sector. Okay. We could find foreshortened center of the circle. And now we just have to connect from here all the way up and to the single vanishing point, center of vision. From this point go up and to the center of vision. And now we could connect these intersections to the center of our circle. And I just want to darken it up just a little bit to see it better. This section is this section in perspective. Make selection. And fill. Okay, and you could use this type of construction to draw clocks or wheels or any object that consists of circles or cylinders that you want to divide in perspective. And last for today, we will use ellipses as a trajectory or a path for rotating objects. Let's say opening a door. Let's sketch out 
very quickly a simple door. Okay, and we want, want to open it, let's say This is our door. Let's hang a painting. Okay, very nice painting. Now, if we want to open a door, the trajectory of opening would be an ellipse. We could sketch it out. And now we could open a door in any angles like this. Or like this. You could draw it more accurately, but I want to I want you to understand a concept so it's not so necessary or maybe we want to draw a box and we want to open the top of the box we could draw an ellipse in perspective and find any rotation we even could animate if we want opening of the box Well, if you like this lesson, please subscribe, give it a like, leave a comment below and thank you. Bye!